An impulse response is a very important concept related to signal processing. It's also sometimes called by its abbreviation, IR. The first way to think about an impulse response is that it's a measurement. It's the response of a system, like an echo effect, when we use an impulse as the input signal. An impulse is a special signal. It has amplitude of zero for all samples, except for our first sample. It has a value or amplitude of one. So to take an impulse response, we're going to send that signal through our system and record the output. So in many ways, an impulse response describes what happens when we send a single sample through our system and we get the output. Therefore, the second way to think about an impulse response is that it represents or describes the system itself. Just as we used an array in MATLAB to represent an audio signal, where the values of the elements in our array represent the samples in our signal over time, we're going to use an array in MATLAB to represent a system. In this case, the values of the elements in our array are based on the coefficients for our signal when it gets delayed over time by a system, whether that's one sample delay, two samples delay, or a thousand samples of delay. So let's jump into MATLAB and explore some important things about an impulse response. Here in MATLAB, let's look at a couple different things related to an impulse response. First, let's consider how it's used to measure the response of a system, like an echo effect. As an example, let's say we're interested in measuring the response of our multi-tap echo effect. This is a script we created previously to process the recording of an acoustic guitar. We created a feed-forward multi-tap echo with three different paths. We had a dry path, then we also had two different delay lines, each with a different delay time. So we had a delay time for one path that was associated with a quarter note, and another path that was a half note based on the tempo of our song. Each path had its own gain here. So we'd run this script and it would process the acoustic guitar. When we want to measure the impulse response, we're gonna send through the system, we're gonna process a very special kind of signal. Not an acoustic guitar, but instead we're gonna synthesize an impulse input signal. Put in a command here, or a comment, In this case, this signal has an amplitude of one for the first element, then all the other elements in the signal are zero. So I'm gonna put in a sampling rate to work with, a 48,000. Know that we wanna work with about two seconds worth of zeros here. So just for reference, I'm gonna go ahead and plot our input signal, just so we can look at the kind of signal that we're using uh, measure the response of our system. It's a little bit difficult to see initially here, but if I slide the plot over, our first element in the plot has a value of one, and then all the other samples in our signal are going to be zero. And that signal is then processed by these commands, and we get an output signal. Rather than listening to it, I'm going to go ahead and plot the output. So let's run this script and look at the result. So this plot is showing us the impulse response of the multi-tap echo. In this case, when we sent a single spike or impulse through the system, our output actually has three spikes. The first one is associated with our dry path. It has an amplitude of one. And then we have two different delayed impulses. So the second one we see is associated with a quarter note of delay, and it has an amplitude of 0.7. And our third impulse has an amplitude of 0.5, and that's associated with the half note. If we look closely at our workspace, we can see that the delay time for a quarter note is about 28,000 samples. You can confirm that over here on our plot, that the impulse has been delayed here over to about 28,000 samples. And our half note has about 56,000 samples. You can see that our impulse gets delayed over here to that exact number of samples. 
So when we use a system that has memory or has delay, we measure the impulse response. We're going to see these spikes or impulses show up at different samples, indicating the number of samples of delay that gets introduced by the actual system. So this is our plot of our impulse response. It's important to remember that not only is this a measurement of the system, but we actually use it to represent the system or describe the system itself. And as of right now, it's an array in MATLAB. Uh, audio engineers as a convention will actually save impulse responses of a system as wave files. So you have to keep it straight and don't get it confused with the signal that if I would like, if I have this output array, I want to save it and use it at a later point in time. I could use audio write here, and I'm going to save echo ir.wave. I'm going to use our output and our sampling rate. So now I'll execute this command. We'll have a wave file that's a measurement of a system describing how the system is going to behave now stored on our computer that we could load back into MATLAB if we wanted to. As an example, I have another impulse response stored on my hard drive as a WAV file of a reverb. It was a measurement of the acoustic response of a recording studio in Nashville, Tennessee. So I can import in this impulse response. So we'll use our audio read. The name of it here is reverb ir.wave. We're going to store the result of this into new variables. For our system, the array that we'll create, we'll use H. It's the naming convention found in a lot of signal processing. We'll also bring in the sampling rate. Now this is a special kind of impulse response. It's a stereo impulse response. It's actually two different uh, impulses, one for the left side and one for the right side. So now if I wanted to, I could plot H. We can look at the impulses for this reverb. Instead of just having these three distinct kinds of delays that happen, with the reverb, we have many repetitions, many delayed versions of that original signal that occur at different amplitudes over time. This is also the kind of signal or system that we could listen to. So I'm going to say sound of H. We can listen to what this reverb that was measured in a recording studio is gonna sound like. So now we've looked at two important things related to an impulse response. First, how it can be used to measure a system, and then second, how it actually describes and represents that system itself. We can save it as a WAV file on our computer, and we can also import it into MATLAB and work with it just as a regular array.